All right, so now it's time to talk about another very important data structure in JavaScript. We've already seen that arrays could be used to hold multiple values. And so basically when you're working with an array, the problem is you always have to reference things based on the order or the index. When we work with objects, we're going to be able to have names so we can reference something based on the name. Okay, so let's start with a very simple example. I'm just going to have a person, let's say const, something like Jessica. So this will be in an array. So we'll just start with this. And we're just going to put some information about Jessica in there. Let's say we start with her first name, so Jessica. Let's say we put her last name, so Smith. Let's say we put her age, so 19. And let's say we put her state, so Florida. So Florida, something like that. Okay. So looking at this array, you might be able to determine that this guy right here would be the first name, this guy right here would be the last name, this guy would be the age, and this guy would be the state. But the 19 could really represent anything, okay? So from the outside person, it's really not a great use to use an array for this because you want something that's more descriptive, okay? So right now, let's just console.log this Jessica, okay? And let's see what it looks like. So let's pop this open and run this. We just get an array and that's fine. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go const, let's go maybe Jessica two or something like that. And I'm going to put equals instead of the square brackets, I'm going to use the curly brackets or the curly braces. This is how we basically set up an object. And so now what I'm going to have are these properties and these are going to be an association between a name or what some people call a key and a value. Okay. So what I'm going to do here first, since this entry here for Jessica describes her first name, I'm just going to write first name. Okay. So this is going to be a name or a key. And then I'm going to put a colon and then I'm going to put the value. So I'm going to put Jessica and then I need a comma. And then I'm going to put last name. And then I'm going to put, let's say Smith and then another comma. And I'm going to put age and let's say we put 19 and then let's go with her current state and let's go with Florida. Okay, so this is just some information about her. And you can look at the first guy, which is in an array, and the second guy, which is in an object, and you can see that the object is much more descriptive, okay? If I wanted to find out some information about this person, and let's say I didn't know the order of the first name, well, with the object, I can reference it by the first name. With the array, I'm basically screwed, right? I don't know where it is. So what I can do here, let me just first console.log this Jessica two, okay, this Jessica two, I'll let you see what it looks like. So we'll clear this and run this. So basically you see inside of these curly braces, you have all the stuff, okay? Now, if you wanna get something individually, let me kind of reference these two at the same time. So let me kind of get rid of this. Let's go ahead and say something like console.log. And with the array, I'm just going to say, dollar sign curly braces, if I want her first name, it's in the first position. So we use an index of zero. So I'm gonna go Jessica, with the square brackets in zero, and I'll say is currently, if I want her age, it's gonna be, this is zero, this is one, this is two, so I'll put dollar sign curly braces, I'll go Jessica, and then I'll go with a two there, okay? And then let's go ahead and put years old, okay? So we know if we run this in the terminal that basically I'm gonna get that Jessica is currently 19 years old, okay? With the object, I'm gonna go ahead and say console.log, Basically, now I'm going to reference this Jessica 2 to start. So dollar sign curly braces, the Jessica 2, okay? Instead of using square brackets, which we'll be able to use, I'll show you that in a future lesson, I'm going to use the dot, okay? We've seen this a lot. And basically, this is going to allow me to get access to these guys here. So I'm going to put dot, and I'm going to put first name, okay? So you have the name of the object, and then the dot, and then you have the name or the key of what you're trying to get. So in this case, I'm trying to work with this property here where you have first name, and then the value is Jessica. So Jessica 2 dot first name will give me Jessica, and I'll put is currently, okay? Dollar sign curly braces. Again, I'm going to reference Jessica 2, and I'm going to put dot, age, okay, because I'm trying to get that. And then that's basically it. So if we pop this open, and we clear this, and we run this guy, and I forgot the years old. So let me come down here and fix that. So let's put years old. I mean, the idea was basically just to show you that it's the same either way, right? So Jessica is currently 19 years old, and Jessica is currently 19 years old. Okay, so basically two different ways to do the same thing. I would argue in this particular case, the object is much better because it's so much more descriptive. Now let's wipe this real quick. Another way to work with an object, if you don't want to use the curly braces, you could say something like, let's say const, 
Jessica is equal to, you could do the new keyword and we're going to go object. So object, and we're going to put our parentheses here. And then basically you could add properties into this by using the dot notation. So I can say Jessica dot first name is equal to, let's go Jessica. Okay. And then let's go Jessica dot last name is equal to, let's say Smith. And then let's go Jessica dot age is equal to, let's say 19. And then let's go Jessica dot, I think she was state we used. I can't remember. So state that was Florida. So Florida, Florida. Okay. And if I look at this Jessica in the console, it's going to look the same as when we built it before. I know it was named Jessica two before, but it's going to be the same. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. And it's the same thing, right? So you have your object with basically the name, first name, Jessica, last name, Smith, age 19 and state floor. Okay. So that's another way you can do this. Typically you will not see this. You will see the curly braces used all the time. So we're going to stick to that in this course. Now let's go ahead and combine two things together. So what I'm going to do is just use a little store inventory example, something we've seen before. So let's go ahead and say something like we have const item one is equal to, I'm going to set up my curly braces. And let's just say we have an item. Let's say that item is butter. And let's say it has a price and let's say the price is maybe $3 and let's say it has the stock level. So basically how many we have in the store, let's say there's 50 and let's say on order, something like that. Maybe you want to know if it's on order or not. I'm just going to say false. Okay. So basically if I console.log item one, I would have all this stuff. Okay. So we know that at this point. So let's just do a few more of these. I'm going to go const item two. And I'm basically going to just copy this real quick. There's going to be a way where JavaScript can do the heavy lifting for us. We don't have to keep typing out item and price and stock. We can just basically put in the values that we want for that. And it's going to build it for us. Okay. But I'll get to that later on. So we're going to just paste this in. And for this guy, I'm going to put milk and the price for milk. Let's say it's $2. And let's say we have 500 because it's very, very popular. And let's just do two more. So let's go const item three. And let's set this equal to, let's maybe go, I'm just going to paste this in. Let's maybe go something like cheese, cheese. And let's say the price for this is five. And let's say we have 10 for the stock and let's say it is on order. So we'll put true there. Okay. And let's just do one more. Okay. So I'm going to go const item four, and I'm just going to paste this in one more time. And let's say this is steak. For example, let's say the price is $11 and let's say we only have three. Okay. And we'll say that this is on order. Okay. So this is true. All right. So at this point, if we wanted to go through all of these and we try to use like a for loop or something, we're going to run into a problem. Okay. So what I can do is I can basically come through here and I can say that I have const store inventory. Okay. And I can set this equal to, I'm going to use an array here. Okay. So I can loop through it and I'm just going to put in here item one, item two, item three and item four. Okay. So this is a way you can combine things. So basically what I have now is I have an array that basically contains these objects. Okay. So if I look at this guy, so let's just go ahead and console.log this store inventory, store inventory, and let's pop this open and let's run this guy. So basically you see, you have your array and the first guy right here is this object here, right? So it's the butter with the price of three, the stock of 50 and the on order false. Okay. And then so on and so forth. So let's pop this back closed. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to use a little for loop and I'm going to go through all of these real quick, just to give you a little idea of basically what you can do when you combine things. So let's say I is less than the store inventory dot length. Okay. And then I plus plus. Okay. And I'm going to show you the for each method here shortly. So we don't have to keep looping through arrays. So I'm going to start by saying const, I'm going to use this R thing again, and I'm going to say this is store inventory. Okay. That's the one we're working with. I, okay. So that's the current iteration that we're working with. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to say console.log and I'm going to go with some back ticks here. Let's just give information about the price. What else is in there? Let's say we have the price. We have the item, we have the stock, we have the on order. So let's put all this in one little sentence. We'll say the price for, we'll use dollar sign curly braces. I'm going to use R again, this references the first guy. So store inventory with, in the first case, it would be zero. So if I go up here, 
it's going to be item one. So it's basically getting this entire thing. Okay. So all I want to do is if I want to get the item name, I could just put dot item. Okay. And I'll just show you this real quick. Let's go ahead and clear this and run this. So you get the price for butter, the price for milk, the price for cheese and the price for steak. So just going through each one. So this is the first item you put dot item. So you got butter, then milk, then cheese, then steak. Okay. It's also, so the price for this guy right here, we'll put is, if I want to think about the price, dollar sign color braces R dot price. Okay. And then let's maybe put a new line in here. I could say something like we currently, currently have dollar sign color braces R dot stock. Okay. That's how much we have in stock. So let's say it was, we currently have 50. We'll put in stock and the item. If we want to know if it's on order, we'll go dollar sign color braces. We're going to ask if R dot on order, we're going to see if that's true. If it is, we're going to say is currently, or we'll just say is on order. Okay. We'll put a colon here and we'll put is not on order. Okay. Just something simple, just showing you the power of kind of combining things together. So let's pop this open, clear this and run this. So you see the price for butter is three and I should probably put a dollar sign there. So the price for, we'll put a dollar sign there. So let's clear this and run this. So we get the price for butter is $3. We currently have 50 in stock and the item is not on order. So then the price for milk is $2. We currently have 500 in stock and the item is not on order. The price for cheese is $5. We currently have 10 in stock and the item is on order. And then the price for steak is $11. We currently have three in stock and the item is on order. 